And this is one of the thoughts I want to end with, if it's okay. Jesus never reached his potential. Oh! This is cracking a bottle! This megachurch pastor should resign immediately because he is not qualified to be a pastor according to 1 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 7, and Titus 1, verses 5 to 9. And the candy man, and I just want to give a special shout out to my homeboy, Mike Todd, who invited me to church. And they told me you can belong before you behave, and that's good for me because you know I have some behaving to do. I just want to invite you <laughs> to Transformation Church so we can get cleaned together. Because we have dumbed down the gospel, because we're not preaching the true gospel and we are using carnal means to attract people. If you use carnal means to attract men, you're going to attract carnal men and you're going to have to keep using greater carnal means to keep them in the church. So what has happened is this. We have these large churches filled with many unconverted carnal people. But in those churches, we also have this small group of people that honestly want Christ, and they honestly want His Word, and they honestly want to be transformed. They don't need anything else. All they need is true worship of the true God and Scripture being preached to them and lived out before them. That's what they want. Mike Todd has made it his mission to entertain his church members while sprinkling the Word of God here and there, and his unsuspecting audience is oblivious that they are not being taught sound doctrine. Y'all say number five when I go down this time. Y'all ready? For those who don't know Mike Todd, he is the infamous pastor who smeared saliva on someone's face during a church service. Is this behavior something you expect from a true preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, or someone who uses the gospel to draw attention to himself? In this sermon, Mike Todd shared the story of Naaman dipping himself in the Jordan River seven times at the command of Elisha. He could have shared the story without making a show of it. And if you noticed, the crowd screamed whenever Mike dipped himself in the water. This is a major problem. We ought to draw attention to Jesus, not ourselves. But this happens when people get entertained. This seems excessive. This is cold. This feels stupid. Nobody else is having to do this. And nobody else who is wise should ever do this. Now I want to tell you the great sin of the American pastor. And this has got me in a lot of trouble, but it's true. This small group of converted people in that local church all they want is Jesus. But the pastor, in order to keep this larger group of unconverted people, he caters to them. So while he is feeding these carnal men and women with carnal things, he is letting the sheep of God starve to death and he is going to stand before God one day in judgment. There are sheep in all these churches, many of them, even churches that seem somewhat heretical in places, you usually find a group of people who truly want Christ, but the leadership is catering to the carnal and letting the bride of Christ starve to death impoverished. And that is wrong. And there's going to be judgment for it. Have you ever wondered why people flock around the prosperity gospel preachers like Mike Todd? It's because some of these people screaming in the background can't endure the sound doctrine anymore. And Apostle Paul warned about this in 2 Timothy 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 to 4. Y'all say number five when I go down this time. Y'all ready?
Apostle Paul would tell Mike Todd to quit entertaining his flock and preach the word of God. One more and my family is delivered. One more and I'm the lender and not the borrower. Come on, I I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. One more obedience step in crazy faith. I've done it over and over and over and over and over again. But if I do it one more time, obey him to the point where your crazy faith creates a crazy miracle. Let's do this thing right now. Indeed, this gets people's attention. Miracles, not repentance. The idea that there are false prophets. We have to be aware of this fact. There are false prophets. The second thing we need to know is this. False prophets are not always easy to spot. Notice what Jesus says here. Look with me, if you will, again in verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. In other words, Jesus says, the first word he uses is that beware, be alert, look carefully. Because there are false prophets, and these false prophets will clothe themselves outwardly in the clothing of the sheep. But inwardly, they are not so. Jesus says, you need to beware, you need to be on the lookout, because these individuals will dress themselves in the uniform of my sheep. They will hide who they truly are. They will learn to use narrow gate language. They will learn to emulate hard road living. They will learn to masquerade as small crowd people. And they will learn to trick you into thinking that they are on the road that leads to life. And yet, they are false prophets. For centuries, countless lives have been transformed for God's glory because people were presented with the gospel truth, devoid of gimmicks and theatrical displays. If a preacher has to always resort to stage props, creaming on top of their voices and tricks, and not simply relying on the inerrant and sufficient word of God, run away from such a preacher. Such a pastor may be unable to teach and rightly divide the word of truth, according to 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. When several people called Mike Todd out for his ungodly behaviors and false theology, he used those video clips to defend his sinful behaviors instead of repenting. The pastor Mike Todd received major backlash after hawking up a loogie, spitting it into Uh-oh. his hands, and smearing the spit over a man's face as a demonstration no. of laying what? hands. The only stripper I'm in love with is Jesus. What is going on? In today's video, we're going to be talking about Michael Todd. His church conducted their so-called Easter church service. Because why preach the word of God when you could create an entertaining spectacle instead, right? And this is going to be concerning Tim Ross. Um, I'm going to start calling Tim Ross the cussing pastor. Mike Todd has been under a lot of criticism because of his Easter service play. Look, I don't know what's been going on with Tim Ross and his podcast recently. I don't like it, though. That feedback gets loud. I I am a human being, yes, sir. You are a human. We've talked about this, yes, sir. but it's going to help somebody yeah. for us to process this <clears throat> in the basement. In the basement. Process this in the basement or repenting and stepping down for dishonoring God and promoting the doctrine of demons? As the saying goes, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Mike Todd's friend, Tim Ross, has zero respect or reverence for Jesus Christ, so much so that he calls Jesus Christ a stripper. And it was bread to them. We don't make it rain on booty cheeks. We don't make it rain on strippers. We only reverence one stripper. And that's the one that took off glory to put on humanity and then get butt naked on a cross to die for both you and me. The only stripper I'm in love with is Jesus. And he's the one that puts that bread in my pocket. That bread in my pocket. Absolutely disrespectful, disgusting, and blasphemous. 
Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. These two gentlemen claimed God told them to get cancelled by engaging in unbiblical and ungodly practices. Lying about God is a deadly sin. My response was that I'm going to get cancelled. And his response back was, get cancelled. That's essentially what he told you as well. Get cancelled. He told you to get cancelled. You didn't, tr- and here's the thing, <laughs> you didn't, ad- I'm going to spit so no. I can get cancelled. No. I'm going to do Easter. No. You had art. You've been doing ransom for seven years, fam. That was the seventh v- time we did. This ransom. is the seventh iteration of ransom. <laughs> we can't help but think of Apostle Paul's warning in First Timothy four verse two, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Undoubtedly, neither Mike Todd nor Tim Ross fears the Lord, and neither of them qualifies to be a Christian preacher. However, no one is beyond redemption. So we continue to hope and pray that Mike Todd and Tim Ross repent and stop deceiving their followers. But it makes us very uncomfortable when we talk about this issue because Jesus identifies the fact that there are, first and foremost, false prophets. There are false prophets. There are people who are out there who are false prophets. There are those who speak the truth and there are those who tell lies. There are false prophets. Listen to D.A. Carson as he puts a finer point on it. Warnings against false prophets are necessary or are necessarily based on the conviction that not all prophets are true, that truth can be violated, and that the gospel's enemies usually conceal their hostility and try to pass themselves off as fellow believers. There are false prophets. We urge anyone who listens to Mike Todd or Tim Ross to stop immediately. You may think they are preachers of the gospel, but they are feeding you the adulterated word of God. Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share. God bless you.